So far, we have seen that uh, integer factorization is a hard problem. And we showed that uh, a trivial approach, which means that trying every, uh, trying to divide the number with every odd number or uh, every uh, prime less than the square root of the number uh, is an exponential time algorithm and it takes a lot of time. And we saw that RSA security also depends on this integer factorization problem. And we showed that how, we showed how we can uh, break RSA if we have a fast factorization algorithm. So factorization algorithms are actually beyond the scope of this uh, lecture because it is it should be uh, investigated in a course about public key cryptography. We are, uh, but uh, I want to sh show you briefly what can be done. So I will briefly mention Polo's row algorithm. This is a general algorithm, but we can use it for integer factorization. So I will, uh, in two slides, briefly describe what can be done to show you that there are uh, better ways of factorization than the trivial approach. So let's see the polar row algorithm in the general case and then uh, try to modify it for integer factorization. So uh, let's say that we are given a finite set S and we have a map F which is uh, which maps the elements in S to itself. So we choose a starting point. So let's say that we have x0 in this set. And let's say that the this set S has R elements. And let's define xi plus 1 as the output of fxi. So our aim is to find the collision. So we are searching for a collision where xi equals to xj, of course, I should be different than j. So you can think this as a, a collision attack for a hash function. So assume that this f is a hash function. So you're, you are trying to find uh, two different values that are the same. So at some point, xi will be xj. So if you succeed in this kind of attack, then you will find a collision for a hash function. One way to find a collision is store all of the xi's that you computed so far, so from x0 to xj, you store all of them. And when you compute fxj, which will be xj plus 1, you, now you compare this value with the, all of the data you stored so far. Of course, you don't do it by checking one by one. You just uh, sort this and then apply a binary search algorithm to check if this uh, element is inside this uh, set. Uh, which is a logarithmic time algorithm. So a binary search algorithm uh, should be really fast compared to the F operation you perform here. But anyway, it depends on the algorithm. But of course, uh, if you store all of the values, since the size of the S would be large, we cannot store all of them. So it will take a lot of memory to store them. How to reduce the memory? If you only check whether Xi equals to X2i at each iteration, so you're not actually storing all of the values. Instead, you are simply looking at xi and x2i. Uh, and we will eventually find a collision. So this is actually a time memory trade-off. So we reduce memory. But in order to obtain such a collision, we have to perform more operations. And sometimes this uh, approach is referred to as baby step, giant step, because you know here you are taking a baby step. You are increasing i one by one. But this in this is uh, incremented uh, twice. So you are taking uh, giant steps here and taking baby steps here. And eventually, you will find a collision. So this algorithm has complexity of a uh, square root of r in the big O notation. Now, uh, so in this way, you can find a collision. So as you can see, this is the for a hash function. And this is like the same complexity with the uh, birthday paradox. But let's now move on to integer factorization and modify Polar's row algorithm uh, to integer factorization. And uh, maybe one more thing, why do we say that it is a, uh, I mean, you might think that why it is called row algorithm. So at this point, you are uh, initially storing all of these values, you know, x0, x1, x2, x2, x3, and so on. After some point, xj becomes a previous value xi. So this looks like, a, Greek letter row. This is why this is this algorithm is called Polar's row algorithm. So now let's modify it to integer factorization. So SMP is a non-trivial factor of n. 
like in the case of uh, RSA. Choose an easily evaluated map from FZN to ZN. So these are integers modulo n. For example, you can simply choose fx equals to x squared plus 1. Choose a starting point in this uh, set, x, zn. Here a collision would mean that xi is equivalent to xj modulo p. Right? So this is our a. This, uh, so we will try to give input to this f, uh, x and check if the output is matches some of the previous values. So if this is the case, let's look at it in a mathematical sense. Let's think a little bit about uh, number theory. So if xi equals to xj modulo p, this means that p divides xi minus xj. Okay? And p also divides m because this is our first assumption. We are assuming that p is a non-trivial factor of n. So you have these two uh, results. So this means that p device, greatest common divisor of xi minus xj and n. So actually, it will, we will see that p equals to this, not only divisor, but actually it will be equal to this. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So uh, this way we can uh, find p. So how do we find it? Uh, like in the previous case, uh, compute baby steps and giant steps. So you compute the pair xi and x2i. And for each i, you check whether greatest common divisor of these two uh, is different than one or n. Okay, because if this is the case, this means that you found p. So you factorize it. So that is the idea. Inst so instead of uh, performing any factorization or anything, what you are doing is that computing a very simple uh, f function. So this way you obtain x i's and x two i's, and you check the greatest common divisor of these two values. Okay, so that is the idea. So uh, let's uh, convert this to the RSA case. If n equals to p times q, so it is just a multiple of two primes, where p and q are two primes of the same size, then Polis draw algorithm can find the non-trivial factor of n in uh, n to the power one over four steps. So uh, for this reason, this is why RSA only in RSA uh, only two primes are used, and they are uh, close to each other because if there were more primes, then this would uh, this four would be larger, so it will be easier for the factorize it. And we are choosing p close to q because if one of them is very smaller than the other one, the factorization algorithms most of the time uh, find the result uh, early. So this is why we try to choose them their size close to each other. And as you can see, in order to have 128-bit uh, security, now your n should be an integer of 512 bits. So you're actually, when you compare it to block ciphers like AES, in order to get AES 128-bit security, in case of RSA, you have to choose your n 512 bits. But of course, this is only due to the, this uh, generic attack. But we have uh, uh, sub-exponential time algorithms. The previous one was an exponential time algorithm, actually. So we have sub-exponential time uh, algorithms for factorization of integers. Of course, we don't have time to go into details of these methods, but let me just give you the names of some of them. Dixon's methods, this is also known as random squares. Birilhard Marusin algorithm, it's also known as continued fraction expansion. Quadratic C method, but as far as I know, the best one currently is the number field C method. So these, all of them are sub-exponential time algorithms, but you know, remember the definition of the sub-exponential. Uh, the gamma parameter there becomes uh, smaller when you go from top to bottom in this list. So this is the best attack we have so far. And actually this defines the, uh, key length of RSA. We are actually choosing the key length of RSA by comparing the results of the sub-exponential time algorithms. For instance, uh, at the end of these slides, I will show you that, but in order to get 128-bit security, today you have to choose your RSA key uh, larger than 3,000 bits. So the N value, which is just multiplication of P and Q, should be larger than 3,000 bits. 
So this is why uh, these factorization algorithms are important. If somebody can come up with a better uh, algorithm for factorization that is better than number field C method, then we will have to update our key lengths for RSA. And instead of maybe 3000 bits, we will be forced to uh, 10,000 bits keys and so on. But uh, this would cause uh, performance loss. Uh, 